You decided that you want rabbits, but how many should you get? Today we're going to be breaking down the math to decide how many rabbits you need to feed your family. I'm Danielle of the Splitaro Farm and welcome to our channel where we share content around our homestead and farm and the process of we're taking to turn t our 10 acre plot into a farm. So without further ado, let's talk through what some of the rabbit math is so that you know that you're getting the right amount of rabbits for your family. An average family of four consumes around 888 pounds of meat per year in the US. Now, there is a bit of an ebb and flow here. If you are not a huge meat eating family, then you're probably eating around 700 to 1,000 as more of an average. And then you'll want to give and take depending on the size of your family. But I wanted to kind of give you guys a reference and then we can go from there and see how the math correlates. We're gonna start off with your average trio, which is one buck and two does, so that we can start to look at the numbers and have a solid base that we can use and figure out how many rabbits we need to feed your family. We're gonna pretend that this trio is ready to go and they're ready to be bred starting at the beginning of the year, and then we'll look at what does the full year of these rabbits look like and how much meat can they actually produce in this year. So January 1st, we're gonna take those two does and we're going to breed them with the buck. We're then gonna wait 31 days, and this is when you can kindle those does. And this is gonna give us, on average, around eight kits per doe. So you can actually have way larger kindles. I've heard of 10, 12, and I've also heard of smaller ones. But we're gonna say, on average, we're gonna go with around eight kits, giving us 16 total kits for this trio. Next up, we're going to want to wait six weeks. This is gonna give us enough time to start to wean those kids from their mothers and be able to rebreed the does. This also gives enough time for those does to get ready to rebreed and to give them time for new kids. We're then again going to follow that same process as we did before, waiting 31 days, and then we're gonna be getting 16 new kids. We're again using that eight kit per doe average. And this is going to be the first time that we're actually going to harvest for the year. So we're going to take those kits from February and it's going to be enough time to now harvest them. Okay, so we're going to do some fun math here. I have one rabbit at five live pounds. So this is going to be your fryer weight for these rabbits. And if I have 16 kits, which is down below, that's going to give me 80 pounds of live weight. Now, once you actually harvest this meat, you're gonna have around 60% of actual meat, giving you 48 pounds of actual meat. So I think a lot of times when we think of rabbit meat and how much you're actually getting, they will talk about the live weight as opposed to actual weight, but we wanna use actual weight here today because that is gonna be what you can actually eat out of these rabbits. So let's continue on. As you can see, I put the 48 pounds in the corner so you can kind of see as we're going along how much more actual weight you are getting from these rabbits. So from April 15th, that Kindle and harvest date, we're going to wait six weeks as we did last time, giving us to June 1st. We're going to wean and rebreed. Follow along in the same cycle, we're going to wait 31 days, giving us to July 1st. We're going to Kindle 16 new kits, and we're also going to harvest our April kits, giving us a new total of 96 actual pounds in meat. We're going to wait six weeks, giving us to August 15th, wean and breed. Wait 31 days, Kindle, 16 new kits, harvest our July kits, and this is now going to give us 144 pounds of live meat. We're gonna wait six weeks, wean and rebreed on November 1st. Wait 31 days, giving us until December 1st. We're going to Kindle our last set of kits for the year. This is gonna give us 16 Kindled kits, and then we're gonna harvest for the last time of the year our September kits, leaving us at 192 pounds. This would also mean that we have 360 pounds of live meat. Now, I think there are just so many articles online that tell you, oh, for a breeding trio, you can easily get 300 pounds of meat, which is true. We are getting 360 pounds of live meat here on average, but that is our live meat. It's not our actual. So it's not kind of that take home meat that you're going to be eating after you have done your harvesting. So something to think about there. Looking at this, this was a pretty aggressive year. We did five Kindles for the year as a 
rabbit meat breeder. This is probably going to be one of your more aggressive amounts of breeding that you would do per year. I know that we're probably planning on doing around three candles a year, maybe four. Uh, and this is just going to make sure that your does can last a lot longer. If you are doing five candles per year, it can be a little tasking on the does. So what you might want to do is prior to finishing off that year, maybe the second or third candle, you actually start to bring them in and you have them start to breed for you as well. And this way you can just make sure that your does aren't too tasked and you will be able to provide more meat. Another thing to think about here is that rabbits are light dependent. So you might lose breeding in October or some of the fall months when it does get a little darker, especially if you have your rabbits in an area that's shaded. Another time that rabbits can slow down their breeding is if it's too hot. So in June and July, it might be too hot for them to breed. So it could be a little bit harder to get that full amount of kindling there. If your numbers have been changed on how many rabbits you're thinking of getting your family, please comment down below on how many rabbits you want. And remember that you can start with a buck and two does, but once you have your first litter, you can choose to remate any of the kits with their parents. So you can mate any parents and children, but you can't mate siblings. So think about that as you start to do your math and do allow for some time to test out any new does. So if this is one of your does first time breeding, or if you are choosing to have a kid turn into a breeding doe, remember that they might not be too great at it. So you want to really make sure that you're going to have a good doe before you turn her into a breeding doe. So give yourself a little bit of time in order to test that out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and definitely stay tuned for future videos. Have a good one.